Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at the certificates feature that's built into Mac OS Server. Now, certificates or SSL certificates, uh, SSL stands for Secure Socket Layer Certificates, uh, create the encryption that happens between communications. Uh, normally, without a certificate, you'd be communicating out in the air. You would have no idea of knowing who the server was that you were communicating with and whether it was safe or not, which would mean that someone could spoof the address and point you to their server and use it to hack into your computer and all kinds of different things. SSL certificates create a reassurance that the server that I'm connecting with is actually the server that I'm going for. And so those certificates create that encryption between the two of them so that the information passed back and forth then is encrypted. And so SSL certificates or these certificates are used in OS 10 server or in Mac OS server in a number of different ways. They're used uh, like we see them traditionally on websites and you can tell whether a website is encrypted by the lock. Now, let me just go ahead and pull up a website here uh, to show you what I mean. And so if I just pull this up here, here's a website that I was working with. And if you just hit the little lock here, oops, let me just hit the lock. You can see that it drops down this uh, page here that says, okay, so here is uh, the certificate that we've got, and it's okay. We've got it uh, vouched for. Uh, it's all right. Now, if we wanted to, I could show the certificate, and you could see who vouches for them. You can see it's a VeriSign uh, certificate, Symantec Class 3, and there's Namecheap.com. So that's how we would see the certificates, and so that's how we know that a website is encrypted or not. And this keeps our computer from saying, hey, I don't know who this is, and throwing up errors. So in our server, if you're going to host a website, this would be a great way to make sure that your server doesn't throw up errors to your clients or people that are hitting your website. So I'm going to show you how to put that together. Let's go ahead and put this down, and let's go ahead and go back in here. So let's take a look at the uh, certificates page. And you can see here we've got a number of certificates that are already listed. And starting at the top here, we have a server fallback certificate. And this is cert the certificate that was created when the server was started. So the server automatically creates one for me. And you'll notice it says self-signed. Now, a self-signed certificate just means that I'm just vouching for myself. There's no third party that's vouching for me. And if I used this certificate with anyone else, it would throw up errors on their machine saying, hey, we don't know who this is. They don't, we don't have a third party vouching for them. And they'd have to accept it in order for it to work. Now, you can install these certificates on other machines and those sorts of things so that they are trusted and they don't cause problems. But I'm going to show you how that works when we get into the Profile Manager service. Now, you'll also notice I've got two other certificates here that are blue, and these are a regular one for my domain and a code signing certificate. And what these are are the ones that were created when I set up Open Directory in the previous screencast. Uh, I set that up first this time because I wanted to show you what these certificates look like and how they are set up. And uh, this is what happens. These are the code signing certificates that an Open Directory uses. Now, you'll notice up here I can secure ser uh, services using, uh, and notice it says two certificates selected. If I just click on this, I can choose to use that uh, Open Directory uh, immediate certificate to code sign all of my services, uh, things like calendar, mail, contacts, uh, or I can do it on a customized basis. And if I just click on Custom here, you'll notice I get this drop down. That gives me the option of choosing what certificate I want to choose. And you can see there's only one uh, the Open Directory that's using the Open Directory Intermediate Certificate. All the rest of them are using the self-signed certificate. And so I could just go in here and select them and change them individually if I wanted to do that. And they would change and I could save it and then they would use that certificate instead. So I just wanted to show you that you can do this on a service-by-service -service basis as well. I'm just going to cancel that. Now, a certificate, if I just click on this and hit Edit, uh, looks like this. And so this is what the inside of the certificate looks like. You notice it expires in two years. You can see all the encryption information in here. And uh, this screen just kind of shows you all the stuff that goes into the certificate. It's not really that important uh, to know all that yourself. But you'll notice there's this Renew button down here. And this is important because these certificates do expire. You can see this one expires in two years. And so this is where I would need to come in to renew it. I would just click on the Renew here, and that would renew the certificate for me. So I just wanted to show you that that's there. I'm going to say OK and close that. So now what I want to do is let me show you how to create uh, a certificate that is verified by a third party and walk you through the steps of how to do that. Okay, now to create my own uh, certificate here, uh, there's a couple of ways I can do this. 
Uh, I just click this plus right here, and I want to select get a trusted certificate because this is a certificate I'm going to get from a third party. Uh, I do have a couple other options here. I do have the ability to create a certificate identity, and this would be where I could create my own uh, self-signed certificate. I have a choice between self-signed root and leaf. I'll just leave it at self-signed. I could put my server's host name in there, and then I can choose whether I want to do an email uh, certificate, uh, SSL for the client or server, VPN client and server code signing or custom. If I do custom, then it allows me to choose my own certificate and upload it. I'm just going to cancel that and leave it at SSL. That would be the typical. And then I'd create that, and then it would create a whole certificate for me with that information on it. Uh, I'm just going to get rid of that because I don't need to do that, but just wanted to show you that that's there. And then I can also import a certificate identity if I wanted to do that. And let me just show you that real quick. If I already had a certificate, then what I would do is drag the uh, private keys in here as well as the public certificate here. And you could drag any non-identity certificates if you needed to, but you wouldn't have to. But this is where you would drag that if you already had your certificate and you didn't get a chance to set it up ahead of time. Uh, we're going to show you how to set it up from the start by getting a trusted certificate. So let me just click on this. And so this is going to create what's called a certificate signing request. And so it's going to generate some code that's going to allow the certificate provider to verify that we are who we say we are. So I'm going to click on Next here. And so now I want to select my host name. And there's my host name right there. And so I've got my server one. And now I need a contact email address. And so you're going to want it to be an email address that relates to your server. Now for most uh, hosts, wherever you get your domain name, they'll have a forwarder where you can create a like admin at you know whatever your domain is dot com and they will forward that information then to uh, whatever email address you want to put in there uh, so if you don't have one then that's how you would do it um, we haven't set up email here on our server so there's no way of using email here um, but that's how you would do that you'd want it to somehow match your domain if you have it hosted already then great just use an email there so I'm gonna put that in here Okay, then you put in a company or organization. Uh, I'm just going to put my name in here. A department, I'm going to say NA. Uh, you put in your town and state and country. So let me do that. Okay, once I've put all that information in there, I'm going to say next. And what it's going to do is generate this code. Now, this is called the code signing request. And so this is the information. This is all the code that I need to copy. And so I'm just going to copy it from right here. could make it easier. Say copy. So that I'm going to paste this into my request, which I'm going to show you in a minute. And I'm just going to click on Finish. And what this does is this adds a placeholder now for the certificate that we're going to get from the third party. And you can see that it says Pending. And this is where we're going to come to set this up once we get it all ready to go. So now that we've got that set, let me go over to where I bought the certificate and show you how to set it up on that end. Okay, so here we are over on my domain provider. And so I bought this positive SSL uh, certificate. And so we're going to go ahead and activate it. And so I'm just going to click on Activate. And here is where I paste in the code. And so once I paste this in, it's going to fill in my domain for me uh, and go from there. So let's go ahead and just paste this. So you can see that that's now pasted in there. And so what it's going to do, if I click off of it, you can see it's going to fill in my domain for me already, put it right there. Uh, now we got to select a server type, and in our case we're just going to put Apache, because that's what we're using for our web stuff. And you can see it's got the hashing logarithm and everything ready to go. And all we need to do is click on Submit. So it's going to submit that and take us to the next page. And this is where we do the validation. And so if I just scroll down here, you can see it's got everything that I put in place. It's got my email. Uh, right there, the admin. So it's read that. And I'm just going to say next. And we're going to click on next. And now it takes us to this page that asks us how we want to verify the domain control. And so this is just for security purposes to make sure we are who we say we are. And so you've got different methods. You can do it by email, HTTP, DNS. We're just going to do it by email. And it's basically going to send it to, right, you can see the different uh, email that we've got here. We're going to go ahead and just say this admin uh, email that we had set up from before so that it's sent there. And we're going to say next. 
And now what it's going to do is ask for the company contacts. And so this is all the information uh, that you would put in with your address and all of that kind of stuff, as well as the administrative contact person for the uh, certificate. You would put all this information in here. So let me go ahead and add all of this. Uh, you notice it's all optional to put this in here. Uh, you don't have to have it uh, in there. And so, if you, again, it says if you're applying as an individual, you can enter NA for the company name. Uh, so what I think I'm going to do, I'm just going to put NA in our case because I'm not a company. So let me just put that in. There we go. Since I'm an individual, uh, I'm just going to put that on there. And then down here for administrative contact, uh, I just put in the email that I had from before. So now that I got all that filled out, I just go ahead and click on Next. And so now it takes me to the Confirm page. And so it says shortly an email is going to be sent to the email address that I've got. I just need to locate the email and click the link inside it to finish this process and then activate uh, the certificate. So what I need to do is just wait for this email to come in. So I'm going to go ahead and check that out and I'll show you what it looks like when I get it. Okay, so the email got sent, and you can see here I'm on this page that talks about how to uh, validate, you know, for using email method or whatever. So let me go over to my email, because uh, I got an email here uh, for that order. And so this is an email that tells me uh, that I need to browse to this location and put in this code that they gave me. So I'm just going to copy this code. I'm going to browse here. It's going to open up another window for me. And all I've got to do now is put in my code here, and I'm going to say Next. It says you've entered uh, the correct validation code. So the team's got to show uh, now perform a check uh, to validate it before the certificate can be issued. And so I can go ahead and close that window. And they're going to do a validation now. And once they do that, I should get some information that will uh, give me what I need to put in there to have my certificate issued. OK, so here we are back on my web page there. And as you can see, my certificate was issued. Now, it might take you a day or so to get that back, so just have a little patience. Uh, right from the website here, if I just come over here, I can download the certificate now that it's been issued. Uh, or usually, you get an email that includes a zip file with it inside. And so I got one of those. Let me just pull up. Uh, let's just go ahead and put this down here. And I'm just going to pull up the finder here for a minute so you can see. I've got my certificates, and I've got these two certificates here. I've got a certificate, and I've got a uh, bundle certificate. And this is, this is for the trust certificate. So all I need to do now to install these is go ahead and double-click on this, and I get my screen back up here. And all I want to do is come in and select these two certificates. Just grab both of them. And then I just want to drag them up here into the window. And you can see I've got my certificate that will be added. I'm going to go ahead and just put this down. And we're going to go ahead and say OK. And it's going to add that certificate for me. And it should be all set now. And you can see here I've got my Komodo uh, certificate installed. And everything is set and ready to go here for me. And so now all I've got to do is I can just come in here to my services and say Custom. And I can select what service I want. So for instance, instead of this fallback, I can now select my certificate that I purchased. And I can do that for all my various services and say OK, and it will secure those services with that certificate. So that gives you an idea of how those certificates work and how to install an SSL certificate. Hopefully that helps you uh, if, if you decide to go out and buy your own certificate. Hopefully it helps you learn how to install it and get it up and running. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.